Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Professor Baldev Raj. I'm delighted to be here and meet several friends, colleagues. I have been interacting over the years. What I'm going to do, tell you a few things what you could expect during the three days, during two and a half days. And our ambition to go beyond what we do very well. Many of us are in technology, in manufacturing systems, in design. And now there is an opportunity to understand probably better what the needs are for large volume of population. And what we do here in India is equally relevant for the rest of the world. And I'm going to highlight that aspect, how other countries could benefit from what we are doing here, both from BRICS countries, but also Western countries. That's what we believe inclusive manufacturing stands for. This is our initial ideas, as Professor Baldev Raj has mentioned. This is initiation of ideas. But behind this, there are a few key concepts. It's about products and associated services. I want to highlight, we need to look at both when we think beyond. Accessible and usable by very large heterogeneous population base. So whatever we are talking about in inclusive manufacturing should be relevant for large population. And there is a scientific challenge going from few million to a billion. And that scientific challenge, country like India, country like BRICS countries, can research more than other countries who experience what the challenge is for real. And this is a diagram came from Professor Amoresh Chakraborty. Try to encapsulate what this is all about. We talked about dignified well-being and sustainable development for all. I'm so pleased to meet colleagues who works with rural communities, different deprived communities around the country, and they're all here. One thing we are going to emphasize during these two and a half days, it's now time to lift frog and go beyond just providing basic necessities, making their life better overall. Having better quality of life, going beyond what we need to survive, actually delivering well-being overall has to be our goal. And India can lead in that process. It is also in line with United Nations Sustainability Development Goals. So what we are talking here is relevant for the rest of the world from that perspective. But there are challenges. There will be technical challenges. And one of the things we'll be highlighting during the you know, sessions it's not about low technology. It's actually about using highest technology we have. From material science to satellite technologies, from digital technologies, from nanotechnology to macro level digital services, bringing in quantum technology. How can we shift the game to reach out to people? That has to be our goal. And it is also about productivity improvement. Let's not underestimate significant challenge, not just in big corporates about productivity. There is real issues about rural productivity, which needs to be improved. And while we are doing that, we must uphold well-being of people, and that's their health. Ergonomics of work. So in the name of development, we should not ignore well-being and quality of life and health 
of people. We must do it together. It's important to create more jobs. Because on one hand, when we introduce new technologies, like advanced technologies like robotics, for example, that will have, by the way, impact on jobs. It will reduce in certain sectors. But country like India, country like BRIC countries, needs millions of jobs. And that's not just for feeding people, it's for cohesion in society. We should be investigating, researching how to create jobs. And I think in two and a half days, we will discuss areas which will create new jobs. Now, when we talk about technology and structural transformation, we need political will. And I'm very pleased to see from outside, I'm not fully knowledgeable, I accept that, about what is happening in India. I'm very proud to see that India as a country is going forward, so as many other countries. But there will be points where we have to make structural transformations and decisions about technology, usage of technology. We should not think our current model of rural India should remain like that. We should innovate new model of advanced rural environment where people would be proud to live rather than leave to cities. Some initial thoughts. I mentioned about cutting edge technologies. Think about home based manufacturing. I come from Calcutta where in my childhood I saw people make things at home much more than what they do now. Can we design products where we can empower communities to create clusters, to create networks where individuals can work with community to build new products and new services? And we'll give some examples on that. We will talk about affordable product and service development. For us, it's about understanding customer better, their affordability better. That's really what we should be investigating on. And when we talk about manufacturing, there are four basic things we really need to discuss. Materials, skills, energy and capital. Think about engineering what we teach at university. Is it good enough for 1.3 billion people? I can tell you I am product of this country and I can tell you honestly now that what we are taught needs revamp nationally to reflect what mass engineering needs. There is a need for India to lead in mass engineering. And we are not doing that today. We must do that for the future. Not just for India, for the world. What works for 10 million people doesn't work for 500 million people. We need different systems. And one of the reasons we have problems in our society and our systems, whether it's hospitals and other systems, railway platforms, because they're not designed fundamentally for millions of people. They are designed by engineering which are for smaller number of more educated, more aware people. We are forgetting basics of design. There is opportunity. Smart villages, make in India, digital marketplace, digital payment, national health policy, use of public procurement to develop industry sectors. And I believe this forum will provide an opportunity to bring all of our thoughts together to help in influencing some of these as aspects in the country. I emphasized it's not just about product, it's also about services. So I'm going to mention that later on tomorrow. 
two slides to talk about what we expect as an outcome from this forum. It is about networking, and I'm very pleased to see wide spectrum of colleagues are here. So not just scientists, not just engineers. We have colleagues from NGOs who have real experience working with people are all here. I would really request that we should listen from each other and learn from each other. We will prepare a report afterwards and I believe that would be useful for government to take notice of, to understand your thoughts in this area. And it goes beyond India. I am very pleased to see that BRICS meeting is adjacent to this meeting so that we have some limited interactions. In UK, in other Western countries, there's a big need for affordable medical technologies. I can tell you from United Kingdom, this is one of the key challenges government has set for us. What we talk here will have impact in the United Kingdom, will have impact on Finland, will have impact on America. That has to be our goal. Building capability through industrial research collaborations. There is opportunity. In the United Kingdom, we have government now investing in what is called global research challenge funding. Through that, we can all work together to bring technology to people. And what is really important, when technology is introduced, it changes society. We must also understand impact of technology on our society. Thank you. And I hope you have a wonderful, useful communication and collaboration beyond this forum. Thank you.